So we're here to close out Takeya Sakachi's debut week on the site with this challenging battleship's pentomino puzzle, and the theme is squares and all the givens and the grid are squares. And as we get started, I think, you know, this may be a shape set you haven't thought about before, what we'll call the rounded pentomino shape set. Um, cells that are squares always have to have, uh, in some direction, it could be in both directions, basically clues on uh, the opposite 180 degree sides. If you have a cell like this, it only has cells like 90 degrees separated, they get rounded corners. And so that means that if we look across the shape space, there is only one uh, pentomino that has no squares in it, that's W. Uh, there are a few pentominoes, the I, the L, and the Y that have two squares and everything uh, that are sort of in a four long stretch. And then you have things like this T, but this T is effectively again like this square uh, with three in a row, the square of three in a row. And so if we have squares as the clues, and you know that only 11 of the pentominoes have squares, well, how are we gonna deal with what we've got 12 squares here? Well, that means two of these squares uh, that are three apart like this will have to be part of an I, and the only ones in the grid are these two. So one of these is part of an I. So our first placement in the grid will have to be this I. And one of them is near a six, five set. So if this was the I here, how are we making that six clue work exactly? We've got six cells left and that's not one pentomino. So that looks like that's uh, impossible just from first principles. So the I has to be in the only other spot in the grid for it. That also lets us put in uh, effectively 11 pentominoes with squares to make all the square clues work. Um, there is no other shape that's got uh, two squares at a touch of, uh, like this, so these have to now be different shapes, and now all the other pentomino groups are different shapes. Once you've marked these off, we actually know, as I was saying at the start, we have to have the 180 set. We have to have enough cells shaded so it's useful to have a square as the clue, and so that means these get marked in. We actually can mark these off. These now around this square had to be marked and we've got to go up and down because we can't come left on this one. Uh, we also can't take this for diagonal uh, cell reasons. How do we get four to work in the six column? It's not taking three of these with one down below because that's make this shape too large. So we've got to take two of these and it's always this bottom one with one of these two and it's taking these bottom two. So we've actually placed the L by thinking about the four clue. And that means we actually can't take these and we can't take these, so this cell on its own has to be shaded. The I is already in the grid, so this has to be a Y, and it's gotta be this Y, which connects over in this way. So we now have the Y in the grid. And again, square clue, square clue has to have cells either up and down or left with right when it appears. So in this case, we know we have the V in the grid. So we'll mark in that. Uh, this square is gonna have up with down. This square is gonna have to up with down, mark these off. Can this go any further in the space? No, because the L and Y are in the grid. It could take an N shape, um, so that's still available to it. Um, but at least we know these bits for sure. Same kind of thinking over here. This can't go any further because the L and Y are in the grid. And actually this row is finished with those two. So this is forced to be the P in this corner. And we've actually finished these clues for this three column. So we get this in the space. Um, the five and six vertical clues are probably the next that are pretty limiting. We've got three cells to take up here, and we've got four cells to take around the six clue. And we're only gonna get as many as three from the six clue itself. And it would be awkward to have that not be these put in these. This would actually force us to be a square, and there's no square pentomino that can take to another square right now. So we know these have to be uh, vertical. I actually don't know anything about this direction, but I do know this direction is off, and I know that these cells are off. So this four is vertical. That marks this cell off, and these cells off. This square is gonna need to be able to touch into this. So this is also vertical, but it's not a P-shaped, so it's gotta at least take this cell and not be P-shaped, but it can't be an N, it's gotta be a U. So getting a fair number of constraints here. Uh, so we're still gonna take one of these cells and it, we can't take these cells this way. And if the cell is taken, we can't take this cell. So the cell is off. So this is also a, just a two wide pentomino. And if you and P in the grid, this has to be the end. So we're pretty quickly running through this grid by just thinking about limitations of the shape inventory and the power of these square clues, giving again, the up and down or left and right uh, constraints around them. So, we 
are now pretty sure that we are going to put the one pentomino that doesn't have any squares into this space somehow. And that's recognizing both that this column needs to have more cells and there aren't more clues for it. And how many can we take from uh, this red shape? Well, we can take as many as two. And actually, this W looks good and almost looks like the only W I can put into the grid. Like, there's not more there. But if this takes two in this column, one, two, three, four, we need to get one more cell from this starting clue here. And the only two ways that would have worked at the start is as a V, but V is in the grid or as a T shape. So we can logically force this as a T. And now if the T plays, we should be even more convinced that the W uh, in the one spot it could go is there in the grid. So we're now through all the clues, but uh, maybe this one with this four. Uh, we have one cell to take in this row, and it's going to be coming from the square clue in all cases. So we're not coming from this up. And in these cases, we've used all the, the pentominoes can only be in two rows or two columns. So I'll have to take this cell. So this isn't a T, but this is an F or a Z. We're not coming down here to make this into uh, uh, an N shape. So we have to take this, and this isn't a T. This is a Z, so this is an F. And our friend, the X, is the last pentomino to place, and we're through the grid. So thanks to Kay for this great puzzle. I really enjoyed the different ways, both thinking about the shape inventory, but also why squares and where squares are in the grid work out. Getting 12 squares where 11 pentominoes have squares is a key constraint to observe that gave us the I and then slowly gives us the rest of these. And particularly as you were seeing, like as I marked off the cell is, is unused, we then do have to have horizontal stretches to make it rational for this to be a square shape that the, the rounding of corners when you're not taking both left and right or up and down is a key observation to make about why the shape pattern looks like this. And if you haven't learned design aesthetics, like this is one of the kinds of design aesthetics of rounding uh, corners that definitely takes, takes place here as the artistic view of the puzzle, but also then the logical requirements of the puzzle to get these commitments through the grid. So thanks for watching this video. Hopefully you learned something about it. And Got a good feel through this week about how brilliant Takeo is as puzzle designer. So thank, thanks again for all the great puzzles this week, and we'll see you again soon.